We read the title, so let's just start. Step one, set a start and end recording hotkey on stream elements. Just select file, settings, and hotkeys to create your hotkey of choice. Set it for both start and end for convenience. Step two, set the file path for recordings. Go on file, settings, and output to find the default file path for completed recordings. Change the path to your preference. Step 3. Record the sound. In this case, you can find the rip and tear chant on YouTube and record it to Stream Elements as long as your desktop audio is active on your mixer on Stream Elements. And here's the tough step. You might want to pause the video a few times during this step as well. Step 4. Download a video editing software. Blender has a competent video editor, and it's free on Steam. Once Blender starts, select a new video editing file. Top left shows your files. Select the recording of your sound effect, and drag into the sequencer, which is the big rectangle on the bottom of the screen. Once dragged, delete the dark box, so you are just left with the green box. Click on View on the mid-left of the screen, and select Show Waveforms and turn it on. Next, click on the end box and increase the value to about 2000 or so. It's just so we can play back the sound as we edit it. By pressing space, you start the sequencer, which is previewed on the top half of the screen. It will be a transparent box because we don't have a video, but it will still play the audio. You can drag the light blue dial to move in certain locations of the clip. With these techniques and the waveforms present, trim the audio clip by selecting the clip, moving the dial to where you want to trim the clip, pressing K, which will cut the clip in two from where you place the dial, and then deleting the remaining clip to be left with what you want. You might want to add certain effects to your sound as well. For me, I decided to add a fade to the sound so it doesn't end abruptly when played. To do this, simply move the dial to where you want the fade to start on the clip, right-click the clip and select Fade, then select Fade from Current Frame. Once trimmed and faded, select the trimmed clip and press G to grab the clip. Move the clip to frame 0, which is the very beginning of the sequencer, and now set the end frame to the same value as the amount of frames of your trimmed clip. You can find the duration of your clip by selecting it and then selecting the time drop-down on the lower right of the screen. You should see a duration value, which displays the time in seconds, as well as in frames. Change the end frame to the amount of frames the clip has. Finally on Blender, you have to adjust the render settings on the top right of the screen. Select the file path of your preference. Change the file format to FFmpeg video. Change the encoder to MPEG4. Change the keyframe intervals to just under 30 frames, roughly. And change the audio encoder to AAC. No expert in video editing, so some of these settings may be unnecessary, but they will work nonetheless. Once the render settings are done, click on Render, and then Render Animation, and wait for the process to complete. You will find the file in your designated file path afterwards. Final step. Add the sound into Stream Elements. Create a new media source, name it to your preference. Once named, set the file path to your new sound effect. Be sure to untick the Restart Playback When Source Becomes Active box, so the sound doesn't suddenly play as you switch scenes. Once set, create a hotkey the same way as you made a hotkey for recording. For this example, I set mine to Shift plus E, so that way I dash at the monster and do the glory kill. When you play the clip, you may notice a box appear or brighten your overlay. Simply move the box out of the broadcast. No one can see the box, but the sound will still play as normal. Done.